Hello and welcome to the BC Technical Webinar Series. We will be discussing PET F18 Bone Scan Basics. Today's webinar session is worth one voice credit. In order to receive this credit, you must complete the online test, which will be available immediately after this webinar. A passing score of 80% is required for the voice credit to be awarded. You may take the test more than once if need be. A certificate will be emailed to you at the close of this webinar and following successful completion of the online test. Please keep the certificate as proof of your completion of this webinar. A review of PET F18 Bone Scan Basics is important because of the following reasons. As we know, Technetium 99M bone scans have been one of the most widely performed and successful procedures in nuclear medicine. Now, with the improved availability of PET and PET-CT imaging systems, cyclotron-produced positron-emitting isotopes, and available procedure reimbursement, PET F18 bone imaging, with its improved sensitivity and specificity, is making a strong comeback onto the imaging scene. We will be covering the following topics. We will review the PET F18 bone scan background, the physics and imaging protocol guidelines for PET and CT. We will also look at several case comparative studies between PET F18 bone imaging and Technetium 99M bone imaging. Additionally, we have several case examples. And finally, we will list our sources used in preparing this presentation. F18 labeled sodium fluoride was the first widely used agent for bone scintigraphy dating back to the 1950s and 1960s. However, it lost favor after the introduction of Technetium 99M labeled bone imaging agents and the Anger Type Gamma Camera. With the upsurge in the availability of PET scanners and the availability of PET isotopes, F18 bone scans have been rediscovered, so to speak, to become more mainstream. The major benefit of F18 bone scans is significantly improved sensitivity and specificity over conventional planar and SPECT bone imaging. The sensitivity and specificity with F18 bone scans improves from about 80% with conventional imaging to nearly 100% with PET imaging. F18 is a positron emitter with 511 keV gamma rays and a half-life of about 110 minutes. It is cyclotron produced by proton bombardment of oxygen 18. F18 has the desirable characteristics of two-fold higher bone uptake and very rapid blood clearance. We have image examples to demonstrate this later in the presentation. With F18, high-quality images can be obtained less than an hour after injection. On the other hand, it is necessary to wait three to four hours after injection of Technetium 99M MDP. The target organ and critical organ are both bone. Compared to Technetium 99M MDP, there is less radiation to bone surfaces with F18, but more radiation to the bladder wall. Specifically, in adult humans, the estimated F18 radiation dose for bone surfaces is 0.012 mg per megabecquerel compared to 0.035 mg per megabecquerel for Technetium 99M. The F18 bladder wall radiation dose is 0.19 mg per megabecquerel versus 0.03 mg per megabecquerel for Technetium 99M. The procedure should be avoided in pregnant women unless the benefits outweigh the risks. Patients should be well hydrated by drinking two or more 8-ounce glasses of water within one hour before the exam, and another two or more 8-ounce glasses of water after isotope administration. Patients do not need to fast and may take all of their medications. 
F18 fluoride is injected intravenously. The usual adult injected dose is 5 to 10 millicurie or 185 to 370 megabecquerel with obese patients receiving even higher doses. The pediatric dose should be weight-based at 0 0.06 millicurie per kilogram or 2.2 megabecquerel per kilogram with the activity range being between 0 0.5 to 5 millicurie or 18.5 to 185 megabecquerel. Voiding before the scan is recommended to reduce patient discomfort and to reduce image streaking and attenuation correction artifacts. Shown on this slide are imaging protocol guidelines for the PET portion of the scan. If blood pool images are required, immediate imaging is mandatory. Emission images may begin 30 to 45 minutes after injection for patients with normal renal function. For those patients with impaired renal function, the scan may have to be delayed to allow for optimal bone uptake and reduce the soft tissue uptake. High quality images of the extremities may require longer wait times by imaging out as long as 90 to 120 minutes. Images may be required in 2D mode with the interplane septa in place, or 3D mode with the interplane septa removed, depending on the camera system. Emission acquisition time per bed will vary depending on injected dose, body mass index, and camera factors. Considering these factors, typical emission acquisition times are between 2 to 5 minutes per bed. Transmission images may be acquired for attenuation correction using rotating rod sources of germanium-68, for example. Later, we have two case examples showing the benefits of using attenuation correction. Continuing with imaging protocol guidelines for the PET portion of the scan, transmission time using rotating rod sources is usually two to three minutes per bed. Total body scans may require two separate scans, one from the skull vertex down to mid-thigh or lower, and a second scan after patient repositioning from the feet up to the last area imaged. Currently, manufacturers have designed scanning systems that are now able to scan two meters or more in length, eliminating the need to reposition patients requiring a total body scan. Let us now take a look at the imaging protocol guidelines for the CT portion of the scan. First, CT may be performed for attenuation correction for localization. The CT protocol depends on the indications for the study and the likelihood additional radiation exposure will benefit the patient. The radiologist input is necessary. CT dose parameters should be consistent with principles of ALARA to keep the dose to the patient as low as reasonably achievable. Pediatric patients should be scanned with low-dose protocols specifically designed for children and not for small adults, especially since children are more sensitive to the adverse effects of radiation. Dose reduction software may be available from the camera manufacturer to acquire high-quality CT images at reduced dose to the patient one method that has the potential to reduce the patient's overall dose is to survey the total body with PET emission images and acquire follow-on CT images only if needed. Let us now review a comparison between F18 bone imaging and Technesium 99M MDP bone imaging. In two reports, Schurmeister compared the two imaging methods in the detection of skeletal metatastases in patients with a variety of solid tumors. Referencing the 1999 article from the Journal of Nuclear Medicine, in 44 patients with prostate, lung, or thyroid cancer, F18 PET detected 96 metastatic lesions in 15 patients 
whereas technetium 99 m MDP planar scintigraphy detected only 46 metatastases. Also referencing the 1999 article from the Journal of Clinical Oncology, in 34 patients with known or suspected metastatic breast cancer, F18 PET detected 64 metastatic lesions in 17 patients, whereas technetium 99 m MDP imaging correctly identified only 29 metastases in 11 patients. Shown on the slide are several images of the same patient. From left to right are technetium 99M MDP planar bone scan images, a technetium 99M MDP bone spect image, and a PET F18 bone scan image. As expected, the spect scan is more sensitive than the planar images, but as you can see, the PET F18 bone scan is significantly more sensitive for abnormalities compared to the technetium 99M MDP bone spect image. On this slide we see a comparison of technetium 99M MDP planar images, a technetium 99M MDP spect image, and F18 PET CT bone images. The planar bone image does not show any abnormality in the spine. The bone spect image shows the abnormality as indicated by the black arrowhead. The abnormality is also seen on the CT, PET, and fused image, as indicated on the fused image by the white arrow. The F18 image has better resolution. Shown here is a comparison of technetium 99M MDP planar images and F18 PET images. The abnormality in the spine is seen on both sets of images. However, the PET image reveals more abnormalities in the pelvic area than do the MDP images. Next, there are several case examples of abnormal F18 bone scans, but first let us take a look at normal F18 bone scans. As you will see on the next slide, compared with technetium 99M MDP, F18 PET provides higher quality images with better ratios of bone uptake to soft tissue uptake. Case example number one shows examples of F18 PET skeletal findings for several patients ranging in age from 5 years to 30 years. The top row shows coronal, sagittal, transaxial, and 3D MIP of a 5-year-old patient. The second row to the left are images of an 11-year-old patient. On the second row to the right are images of a 15-year-old patient. On the third row to the left are images of a 19-year-old patient. And on the third row to the right are images of a 30-year-old patient. As you can see, there is a very high ratio of bone uptake to soft tissue uptake in these images regardless of the age of the patient. Case example number two shows the benefits of using attenuation correction. PET scans, in general, are sensitive to attenuation correction. Image quality can be improved greatly by using some form of attenuation correction, be it germanium-68 rods, a cesium-137 source, or a CT scan. The next slide shows some examples of this. On the top row is an F18 PET bone scan without attenuation correction, with coronal, sagittal, and transaxial slices appearing from left to right. One can see the streak artifact caused by activity in the renal collecting system leading to apparent loss 
of signal in the right lumbar spine indicated by the solid arrows. Also, the apparent increased signal in thoracic spine results from reduction of attenuation in the lung region indicated by the open arrow. Both artifacts are greatly reduced, seen in the middle row, when attenuation correction is applied using rotating rod sources of germanium-68. After the patient voided, the repeated image shown on the bottom row, acquired in single bed position, shows resolution of artifact caused by the activity in the renal collecting system. Case example number three shows the benefits of using attenuation correction to assist in small lesion detectability. Attenuation correction is vital for detection of small lesions and provides excellent imaging of very large patients. On the next slide, one can see the improved image quality and improved lesion detectability. Looking at image examples A and B, image A labeled NAC is non-attenuation correction image of a pet bone scan. One can see the relatively hot outline of the patient in the head and neck area and lower extremity area. Comparing this to image B labeled AC, which is the same image but with attenuation correction applied, the image appears more refined with the hot outline no longer visible. The lesions are also more clearly resolved. Looking at the image examples labeled C and D, one can see the benefits of using attenuation correction when imaging larger patients. Image C, the non-attenuation correction image, has a hot outline in the lower legs and overall has significant blood pool and soft tissue uptake. Image D is the same image, but with attenuation correction applied the attenuation corrected image is significantly improved. Since PET images are very sensitive to the correct use of attenuation correction, they are also sensitive to incorrect use of attenuation correction. For this reason, it is important the patient does not move between the attenuation correction scan and the emission scan. As we mentioned earlier, the use of attenuation correction is important for small lesion detectability. On the left of this slide, we see the non-attenuation correction image. While some abnormalities can be seen in the spine and pelvis, it is apparent that the attenuation corrected image on the right not only shows more clearly defined abnormalities, but also shows more abnormalities in general. On this slide, we see another example of small lesion detectability improvements by using, in this case, CT attenuation correction. On the left is the non-attenuation corrected image, labeled NAC. The attenuation corrected image, labeled AC, is to the right. In this example, we also see the CT scan along with the fusion image. This slide shows a 3D maximum intensity projection MIP, image of a 46-year-old female breast cancer patient. The patient was injected with 10.2 millicuries of F18 and acquired on a GE Discovery ST PET-CT scanner at 2.5 minutes per bed position. Images are in 2D mode. The 3D MIP provides a quick evaluation of the metastatic disease and involvement. Here are additional image examples of the same patient with three plain zoomed images of the intense uptake in the left pelvic and femur roll head and femur roll neck area. Shown are PET, CT using a bone window and level, plus fused images in coronal, sagittal, transaxial, and 3D MIP views.
On this slide, we have the same patient with zoomed coronal, CT, PET, and fusion of a spine lesion. The 3D MIP image with widespread metastatic disease is also shown. On this slide, we see a skull lesion in the axial plane. Shown are the CT scan in the bone window and level, the PET, the fused, and the MIP image with the triangulation feature turned on to emphasize the area of interest. Case 5. This is the case of a 75-year-old prostate cancer patient referred for an F18 bone scan. The injected dose was 8.5 millicuries of F18. Approximately 45 minutes after injection, the patient was scanned using a GE Discovery ST scanner at 2.5 minutes per bed position. Images are in 2D mode. The lesion in the posterior left seventh rib, as you will see, is a long lesion associated with blastic change, suspicious of metastatic disease. Shown here is the 3D MIP where the long lesion in the posterior left seventh rib is apparent, in addition to other lesions on the ribs and sternum. On this slide we see the coronal and axial views of the lesion. It can be readily seen on the axial CT image as well, in addition to the fused images. This slide just zooms in on the axial view of the PET, CT, and fused images. The 3D MIP is in the lower right for reference. Case 6. This is the case of a 62-year-old renal cancer patient referred for an F18 bone scan. The injected dose was 9.5 millicuries of F18. Approximately 45 minutes after injection, the patient was scanned using a GE Discovery ST scanner at 2.5 minutes per bed position. Images are 2D mode. In addition to the 3D MIP which can be placed in the scene mode, the MIP image can be displayed as a splash, with each rotation seen as a static. These are 16 angled views of the 3D MIP. Multiple abnormalities are seen in the spine, suspicious for metastatic disease. Shown here is a sagittal view of the sternal abnormality seen on the CT using the spine window and on the PET and fused image as well. The 3D MIP seen on the right shows suspicious sites in the pelvis and left femur. This slide shows a suspicious area in the sternum. The axle CT, PET, and fused images triangulate to the area of interest. The 3D MIP in the lower right also triangulates to the area of interest. Case 7. This is the case of an 85-year-old breast cancer patient referred for F18 bone scan. The injected dose was 9.1 millicuries of F18. Approximately 45 minutes after injection, the patient was scanned using a GE Discovery ST scanner at 2.5 minutes per bed position. Images are 2D mode.
This slide shows the three-plane overview with CT, PET, and fusion of the patient's torso. Abnormal uptake is readily apparent in the sternum, spine, ribs, and right pelvic area. The 3D MIP in the lower right also provides an overview of the areas of interest. This slide shows a suspicious area of the patient's rib slash clavicle area. The axle CT, PET, and fused images triangulate to the area of interest. This slide shows a suspicious area in the C-spine. The coronal axle CT PET and fused images triangulate to the area of interest. The 3D MIP on the right also triangulates to the area of interest. This slide shows images of the legs, validating the need to scan the entire body for an F18 bone scan. Abnormal uptake is triangulated to and seen in the left femur, with possible abnormal uptake also seen in the right knee. These images were taken immediately following the torso images and after patient repositioning. Case 8. This is the case of a 49-year-old breast cancer patient referred for an F18 bone scan. The injected dose was 9.8 millicuries of F18. Approximately 45 minutes after injection, the patient was scanned using a GE Discovery ST scanner at 2.5 minutes per bed position. Images are again 2D mode. This slide shows the three-plane overview with CT, PET, and fusion of the patient's torso. Abnormal uptake is seen in the spine. The 3D MIP in the lower right also provides a triangulated view of this area of interest. The last case is the case of a 29-year-old patient referred because of bone and bone marrow neoplasm staging. The injected dose was 9.3 millicuries of F18. Approximately 45 minutes after injection, the patient was scanned using a GE Discovery ST scanner at 2.5 minutes per bed position. Images are 2D mode. This slide shows the three-plane overview with CT, PET, and fusion of the patient's torso. Abnormal uptake is apparent in the left pelvic area. The 3D MIP in the lower right also triangulates to the area of interest. In summary, PET F18 bone imaging offers improved sensitivity and specificity over Technetium 99M MDP bone imaging, and overall patient procedure time is less. However, PET is more sensitive than single photon imaging to attenuation effects. So it is important for the patient to remain still to avoid attenuation correction artifact. The radiation burden to the patient can be greater for PET F18 bone scans in part because the image quality is best after using a form of attenuation correction.
The next two slides show the sources used in the preparation for this webinar. Thank you for participating and please remember to take the test.